Yo, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was actually kind of dreading making this video because I didn't think the Warden was any good at dueling whatsoever. I thought it was gonna be like the Necromancer, but boy, I was wrong. The Magic Warden absolutely slaps. Now, this is a handcrafted build by yours truly. Don't mind if I say so myself. It actually rivals my DK dueling build. So, without further ado guys, let's hop into the build video. Welcome back guys, I'm very similar to my last dueling build on the Dragonite. If this video gets 500 likes, I will low key wax my legs on stream. Before we hop into the actual build itself guys, it's important for me to preface this by saying that all the clips that you see in the background are purely just for content, okay? All of these guys are exceptional duelers and GG's to everyone featured in this video. So I just want to talk about the character sheet a little bit before I showcase the actual gameplay itself. So. When it comes to the race for this build, we are a Breton. I feel that you kind of need the cost reduction since we are a Vampire Stage 3. And the Warden just intrinsically has mana issues, even though it has, you know, Blue Nudge. And you don't think it would, but your spells actually cost a lot. So I do think Breton helps offset that quite a bit. When it comes to food, you can either run Jewels of Misrule, or if you have the gold, you run Smoke Bear Haunch. When it comes to the Mundus, we are running the Lover. Our weapon and spell damage does seem a little low, but don't worry about that. Once you actually start playing the build, you do get up to an effective 6,500 weapon and spell damage, as well as 21,000 physical and spell penetration. So the very first set I want to talk about is the Master's Perfected Ice Stab. Now I do have a Berserker Damage Enchantment on this. I also have the trait at Sharpened. Now the set itself, when you have the Perfected version, it gives you 103 weapon and spell damage. So the two piece, it reduces the cost of your destructive touch by 10% and also increases your weapon and spell damage by 600 for four seconds after activating it. Now, we are actually using destructive reach as our spammable. So you pretty much effectively always have an additional 700 weapon and spell damage up on your build at all times. So one key component with the Warden that goes under the radar for a lot of people is actually how much damage the chilled status effect actually does. So when you take a look at your combat metrics, I highly suggest you guys download the combat metrics if you want to get a lot better at dueling. It's just a really nice add-on to kind of show you how much your healing is, what spells are doing, what amount of damage, what damage you're receiving, and it'll also help you identify what sets you're playing against. You know, like for example, Way of Fire, you may not realize people are hitting you with the Way of Fire proc set until you have combat metrics and it will tell you, hey, on your stat sheet, hey, you're getting hit by Way of Fire. But what I was trying to say is if you take a look at your combat metrics, if you're doing your rotations correctly in any duel, usually the chilled stats effect is one of the top three most damaging abilities you have on the entire build. The next set we're running is Master's Perfected Swords. Ideally, you will want defending on both of the traits, but at the time of making this video, the only thing I have is defending a Nernhone, and I don't have enough transmute stones. And we're also using poison weapons. The reason we're using poison weapons is because this is about 6% of your overall DPS, and this is actually going to help amplify one of the sets, which we will cover here in just a moment. Now, the reason this is so strong is because it actually does amplify your blood craze by quite a lot. So the Perfected version is going to give you a lot of spell crit and weapon crit, and then the two-piece Twin Slashes deals an additional 1635 more damage for each hit of the initial attack and also the bleed. Now taking a look at the tooltip, this does get to well over a 30,000 tooltip over 20 seconds, which is arguably the most hard-hitting dot in the entire game. And not only is it the hardest hitting damage over time ability in the entire game, but it's also going to heal you for the duration if you go with Blood Craze. So that's going to do it for the weapons. The next set we're running, we're going to cover our monster set, which is going to be Marcelix. Now, Marcelix will give you a lot of stamina, which is kind of needed because our stamina pool is kind of low, so it's actually not wasted set. And then the two piece, when you deal damage with a heavy melee attack, you spew a cone of corruption dealing 5,000 disease damage to enemies over four seconds. This damage is increased by 10% for each negative effect the enemy has up to a maximum of 300%. This effect can occur every once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. Now on paper this does seem like a very underwhelming set but we have so many what is quote unquote negative effects. We probably have like 20 negative effects at any given time. This set hits really hard and if you take a look at your combat metrics in between your duels you will see if you're proccing this off cooldown Marslix is usually going to be top 3 or even top 4 of your overall DPS. Usually my Marslix was sitting around 10-11% of my entire DPS. So it's definitely a really good set to have, or if you want to be an absolute cheese lord, uh, you can definitely run Zons, uh, but you are going to get a lot of hate message for that one. 
When it comes to the armor weights, we are running 5 lights, 1 medium, and 1 heavy just to maximize our undaunted passives. Now on your light and medium pieces, you will want impenetrable, and then on your 1 heavy piece, you will want reinforced. We are also running 2 piece trainee. This is going to give us maximum health as well as maximum magicka. The next set we're running is Frostbite. Now this is a very slept on set. Some Warrens are using this, but I don't think you guys can really grasp how much damage this 5 piece actually does. So taking a look at the two piece, you get weapon and spell damage, you get line of crit, you get weapon and spell damage. Now the five piece increases your damage done with frost abilities by 8%. Increases your damage done against chilled enemies by 4%. Increases the damage done against enemies afflicted with minor brittle by 2%. Now a lot of this is kind of confusing. You know, for example, what is chilled? What is brittle? Let me go ahead and break all that down for you real quick. So the first part of the five piece, 8% increase the frost damage. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory now. Increases your damage done against chilled enemies by 4%. Now, chilled is a status effect. On this build, your opponent will be chilled 100 million percent of the time. There is never, not a moment, yeah, I know it's a double negative English really hard, that your opponent is not going to be chilled. Now, the third piece of the five piece, or the third effect of the five piece, increases your damage done against enemies afflicted with minor brittle. You get minor brittle just by applying frost damage while you have a frost staff equipped. So you're always going to have minor brittle on your opponent. And also, also, so also that it's not stated in this whenever you deal direct frost damage you also apply minor maim to your target so there's actually a lot that goes into play here that most people don't even think about so overall with this set it is giving you a line of crit weapon and spell damage weapon and spell damage and it is effectively giving you 16 percent increased damage to your hardest hitting abilities now the hardest hitting abilities on the kit is the chilled status effect it is going to be your destructive reach spammable mars looks and also your northern storm so this set is just brutal to run on the magden now one buff i would like to see on the magden is if they change the damage archetype of beetles from magical damage to frost damage now when that happens this class is going to be the best class in the entire game the last set we're running is our mythic of choice which is going to be sea serpent squirrel sea serpent squirrel is so so strong we are running the bloodthirsty trait with a weapon and spell damage enchantment so while you're at full health you get 40 percent damage reduction who cares but when you are at 40 percent health and you take damage you get serpent tribute this is going to give you major courage which is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 430 and you're also going to get major berserk now, when you're looking at this numbers wise, this is about a 15% damage increase across the board. It is a very, very stat dense mythic and it's really hard to pass up on this build since you are pretty much a heal bot anyway. To finish out the rest of the jewelry, I would suggest two infused traits on the remaining items, one with a magic carry glyph and the other one with a weapon and spell damage glyph. When it comes to our consumables, we are going to stick with a tried and true tripods. These are really nice. This is going to give you all the sustain that you need. And then in the event that you take a big girthy spectral bow to the face, I don't know, around 17k on occasion, uh, this is going to give you a nice little health bump to get you out of execute range. First ability on the bar is going to be deep fissure. Now you always want to time your burst around the second tick of deep fissure because that's when it's going to do substantially more damage and it also inflicts your opponent with major and minor breach which is effectively like 900 weapon and spell penetration. Next ability on the bar is arctic blast. This is the most like stat dense ability that you have on the kit. Not only does it offer you a burst seal but it is also a really good on demand CC. It does damage over time and it has a 50% chance kind of ish to apply the chill stats affect your opponent next skill on the bar is blue betty running this on the front bar just because of the passives to get a little bit extra damage from them and this also restores 5,000 magic over its duration and this is our source of major sorcery and it also removes a negative effect every five seconds and it costs nothing so also a very stat dense ability Next ability on the bar is Frost Reach. Now be sure you have Frost Reach and not Frost Clinch because Frost Clinch does like 35% less overall damage and it doesn't have a dot component to it. So Frost Reach is our main spammable. This is going to apply the chilled status effect each and every single time you weave this. And this is also going to proc our perfected master's eye staff, giving us an effect of 600 weapon and spell damage each and every single time we cast this for four seconds. Next ability on the bar is Fexture Infection. Now this is a pretty hard hitting dot and every other cast of this is going to amplify the effect by 60%, a very, very hard hitting dot. And during the entire duration this is on your opponent, you're inflicting them with minor vulnerability increasing the damage taken by 5%. So our ultimate choice on the front bar is going to be Dawnbreaker as Smiting. This is going to act as a stun and AoE execute in case you get your opponent down into low and they, they break free roll dodge away from you. You don't have any abilities on the kit that's only hit them through roll dodge other than your dot damage abilities and most of the time that's not enough. So Dawnbreaker is there just to finish off your opponent. 
On the back bar, we're running Lotus Blossom. This is actually a really good healing over time ability. A lot of people don't realize how good this is, and this is why you always want to practice your lie attack weaving and do not miss any lie attacks ever. There's absolutely no excuse even with lag. So essentially, this is going to give you your major prophecy on your front and back bar, increasing your weapon and physical and crit chance by 10 percent and each and every single time you light and heavy attack you're going to get healed and plus it's really cheap and it lasts forever the next ability on the bar is very deceptively strong which is leeching vines now leeching vines according to combat metrics and most of my duels is number one if not number two my top healing sources in any duel ever is going to heal you every single second you take damage and it also applies minor life steal to your opponent so coupled with the heal that it intrinsically provides on top of life steal it actually out heals my vigor in some duels do not let this fall off this is only a 10 second duration i really wish they buffed this to 15 seconds because sometimes on the warden it just feels like you're playing buff simulator next ability on the bar is resolving vigor this is going to give you minor resolve increasing your physical and spell resistances by 3000 and this is one of the strongest healing over time abilities in the entire game Next ability on the bar is Ice Fortress. This is our source of major resolve and it also gives you minor protection. Last ability we have on the bar is Blood Craze. Now this is going to proc our master's weapons and this is going to be an insane bleed over time. Like I said, over 30,000 damage over 20 seconds, which hits very, very hard and it's going to heal you for the entire duration. Last but certainly not least is our ultimate choice on our back bar, Northern Storm. Now this set goes off when you pair it with Frostbite and all the other damage effect times we have going on the build. This is an incredible ultimate. Not only does this do 4,000 damage per second in the AoE, but it's also going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 300, and it's also going to reduce their movement speed by 40%, and it's also going to give you major protection during the duration. This is probably, arguably, one of the best ultimates in the entire game, besides Corrosive, of course. And so I'm going to cut to this portion and just kind of show you guys how to most effectively line up the combo. Sorry if I interject on any duels going on. It's pretty intense in the background. I know, I know. But it's very important for you to understand the combo, how to get the most bang for your buck on this build. Because this did take me a little while to perfect. So obviously you want all your buffs up before you go in for your burst. So what you want to do before you go to your back bar. Yes, you want to go to your back bar to get your burst lined up. The very first thing you want to do is obviously you want to have your beetles down. Okay always apply beetles first okay so you're gonna apply beetles you have major minor breach on your target that's awesome so right after beetles you want to dot them up with frost reach you want to dot them up with fetcher infection okay you need to get to your back bar as quick as possible because you're timing your burst around the second tick of your deep fissure okay get to your back bar as soon as you can okay now from here you need to apply rending or blood craze whichever morph you're using and right before you go back to your front bar you want a medium attack weave and then just use an ability it doesn't really matter what it is it could be reapplying leeching vine they could be just using a vigor to go to your front bar but the idea is to have as many negative effects on your opponent as you possibly can before going back to your front bar and that's why we have poison on the back bar because most of the time it will apply the poison for whatever reason during this build video i can't get these poisons to apply but you see they they just applied there let's go over the combo in full now you do have enough time on your back bar to use two global cooldowns you might be able to get three if your animation canceled correctly so here's what you want to do you want to do beetles frost reach fetcher infection far swap blood craze do whatever global cooldown global cooldown before you go to your front bar medium wave front bar dawn breaker beetles so if you do everything very, very fast and efficiently, by the time you get back to your front bar, your Dawnbreaker and Beetles will go off at the exact same time. And you don't necessarily have to get to your front bar to use Dawnbreaker. You can just apply Northern Storm on your back bar, go to your front bar, and then right before your Beetles hit, just Arctic Blast them. That will give you time to aim your Beetles. So if you're like me, you're on controller, landing beetles is sometimes very, very difficult. Um, that is something I'm actively working on on this build, and that's why I lose some of the duels that I do, is because I cannot effectively land my beetles. Now, if you're on console or using a controller, here is a little tip from your boy Horcrux to help you land your beetles. So what happens a lot of the time is when you're dancing around your opponent and you have your beetles kind of lined up, sometimes your, your beetles, you see, I was looking at my opponent even actually over here to the right, but my beetles went over here. You know, why is that? That's because my actual character model, when you're using analogs, it's a really weird animation. Like, for example, if you're using mouse and keyboard and you're dancing around, for, for whatever reason, the beetles will always hit your target, like, no matter what. But when you're on controller, it seems to kind of offset a little bit. So what you can do right before you go in for your burst, you can say if I'm looking over here, obviously the beetles are going to, you know, go over there. 
And sometimes when you get talons, it kind of locks your character in place or trap bees will you know, lock your character in place to where you can't actually turn around. What you can do is you can apply your beetles. Say if you're looking over here, you can medium attack weave right before your beetles come up for the burst. See, I'm looking over here and you just medium attack weave. And it'll, when you medium attack or heavy attack weave with a Inferno staff or a ice staff, it doesn't work for a lightning staff or any other weapon in the game. It doesn't even work for restos. It only works for ice staffs and Inferno staffs. It will actually turn your character model for you, allowing you to hit your beetles on your target. So just a little tip from your boy Horcrux. All right, so let's hop over into the champion points. Now in our blue tree, since we're not running any defensive sets to duel in, we are going to be running two defensive ones. So let's take a look here. So we have Master at Arms, Deadly Aim. Now this is arguable whether or not you want Deadly Aim or not. Um, you can swap Deadly Aim out for Biting Ores, give you more AOE damage, which is going to bolster your Beetles, is going to bolster your Dawnbreaker, is also going to bolster your Northern Storm. So arguably, Biting Ores is better than Deadly Aim. But because we're not running Rallying Cry or anything like that on this build, we do need a lot of crit resistance. So we are running Resilience to deal with your Night Blades. And then we are running Duelist Rebuff. Now it is arguable to run Ironclad as well, but Duelist Rebuff helps reduce all of the incoming dot damage since they are going to be fixing the Cleansing Revival champion point. Now you're not everyone is going to have a built-in purge on their build every 24 seconds. So dots are going to hit very, very hard next patch since you're not going to be able to intrinsically purge them with that broken CP. So Duelist Rebuff is going to help mitigate all the dot damage as well as most single target abilities also counts direct damage abilities when you compare it to Ironclad. So I just think Duelist Rebuff is just better overall. I'll be going to the red tree. We have Pain's Refuge because if you're dueling, you're probably going to have 10, 20 negative effects on you at any given time. So this is an absolute must. Sustained by Suffering to give us more recovery. Fortified is just there for the extra armor. And then also have Balanced Vitality. You don't necessarily have to have Balanced Vitality. You can also have Relentlessness, which is really, really strong because this is going to give you major protection right after being CC'd. And quite frankly, when most people CC you, the burst is coming right after that. So this is really good to help with Night Blades, but you can also argue against it. Well, when you pop your Nodos and Storm, you have major protection for the duration anyway, but uh, it's, it's just nice to have. That's entirely up to you. Green tree, just run whatever, but if you're running expensive potions like heroism potions or, you know, like tricep potions or whatever, you definitely want to run uh, liquid efficiency just so you can get those back, you know, like 10% of the time. Just mostly quality of life stuff here. Oh, that was a mouthful. That's what she said. Thanks for watching till the end of the video, guys. And yes, if this video gets 500 likes, I will have my girlfriend wax my legs on streams. I'm not even kidding about that. I still owe you guys. The hot tub stream from the last build video that I put out, it got well over 500 likes, so I appreciate you guys for that. You guys are freaking awesome. And of course, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who continue to support me even though I go months without posting content. You guys are absolutely amazing. I could not be doing this without you. Again, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Horcrux. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.